Hello there and welcome to another Classic Golf Clubs. I've got a selection of uh, 15 in total putters ranging from the Hickory era through to the uh, probably the early 1980s and we'll be looking at each one in turn just briefly we won't go into dis any detail on makers or anything uh, really looking at the development of the putter um, or at least the, the commonest styles and then after that I'll do a little putting exercise with each club playing three balls uh, along a laminated floor so not ideal conditions but we'll be able to see how each putter performs and I'll do a little uh, league table as well. So here's what I'm going to be using for the uh, putting part of the uh, video. We've got three Titleist Balata or Tor Balata 90 compression balls, a bit of a treat there, and a rubber practice putting cup made by Brit Marine. I've measured out a eight foot um, practice put. It's along this laminated floor so what the roll will be like I've no idea. Time will tell. The first putter then is a hickory shafted uh, JB Halley. Uh, this pyramid sign here was one of their uh, cleat marks. Uh, it's got G Bowser which will be the name of the professional and it's the number 47 uh, model and it's a very simple blade style putter which most of the clubs around this time were it's got some markings on the face um, it's quite a long head if I put a ball down there this is a 1.68 ball and we can see uh, the size of it the orange um, bit of a post-it note that I've got on all the clubs is to show where the sweet spot is on the clubs because it's not always where you might imagine I've done the um, simple test whereby I strike the club face until I find where it feels solid and that's where the sweet spot is. So that's the first putter. Uh, simple blade design, uh, nothing fancy about it. Let's see how it performs. Right, I've hit a couple of practice puts and there is a slight slope so I need to start these just out to the right. JB Halley 47 Massive turn on that one. And that one went dead straight. Maybe it's the putter. Putter number two, another one from the Hickory era, um, but there's a, a very obvious feature to this one, which is a very long slender hosel. And this was uh, patented by uh, a Mr. Oak, OKE, and he used the Oak Tree, OAK brand name. This one was produced by FA Chairs, I don't know if you can see that, the light's not brilliant. FA Chairs signature there, and we've got the oak brand putter there and there it says what does it say WG Oak and the registration number but other than the the long hosel it's a pretty standard simple blade design we've got some uh, punch dot marking there and if I bring a ball in again line that up with the, the, the putter head we can see again it's a long putter head and again, the sweet spot is towards the, the heel of the club um, because we've got such a lot of weight in the hosel. Oh, that's that one. Let's see how that performs. Next up we have a St Andrews uh, Golf Company, or St Andrew Golf Company I should say. You can tell that by the uh, the running stag cleat mark, stag St Andrew Golf Company. 
and we can see there Jupiter model. It's a flanged blade, so blade style, but with a, a flange on the bottom, uh, which gives us a, a bit more um, weight to the head, uh, and also um, it, it, it's, it's a nice aid, I find, to um, setting the club on the ground. Uh, the sweet spot, again, towards the heel, and the hosel isn't quite as long as some of the ones we've seen previously. On the bottom, we've got a 9, and the W probably means that this was a ladies' model. Um, it is a slightly shorter shaft, um, but otherwise it's, it's a nice club. This one is an early steel shaft, coated shaft. Um, you can see it's got a sort of a bamboo effect there. Next up is this unusual looking putter, which is very similar to the uh, Varden design um, mallet type putter, although most of those were steel, um, I believe. Uh, this one is stainless steel, and on the sole, you can see that it says It Sits, which is the model. We've got a cleat mark there, which I think might be Jack White, and then we've got the professional name A. Oakley. Uh, it's a very low profile head if I put the ball next to that. You can see, particularly with a, a modern ball, it's all well, it, it practically is below the center of the ball. So, if you really grounded the club as you hit it, then it is going to pop up a little bit. With the smaller ball, probably not quite so bad. The sweet spot is on the uh, point of the crown, which is a easy help in lining up the club. And the shaft is another, um, we're into the steel shaft era now, but it's another coated steel shaft. That's that one, nice weight to it. Again, easy to ground, and that's an early uh, mallet style putter. So, how will that one perform? Next up is one of my favourite putters, which is the Spalding um, Gold Medal W model. Uh, it's got an anvil cleat mark on it, which tells us that it was produced in Scotland. Uh, it's a pinned head, but another coated shaft, and it, this one is a long blade. Now, the, the benefit of having a long blade is that it, it improves the um, moment of inertia. It's less prone to twisting because we've got weight um, at the extremes of the club head in the same way that you would find with a, um, a perimeter weighted club such as the ANSA style putter and most of the uh, modern uh, larger mallet putters. Sweet spot, again it's towards the heel, not in the middle of the head. Um, the head itself, I think this has got a little bit of lead on the face which just gives it a slightly softer feeling. Uh, pinned uh, hosel, uh, yes, coated shaft, nice against the ball. Very easy, I find, to align this one. It's very easy to square it up to the, the intended line. So let's see how this one puts. next one is a, a very famous name in golf, um, which is Joyce Weatherhead. I believe this was produced in America um, at the Wanamaker store. Uh, Joyce did a, a tour of America um, and uh, signed a few um, deals while she was over there. And I think one of them was with the Wanamaker store and produced some clubs. When I have tried this one, I found it very difficult to use, but I think that might be because I wasn't, hadn't realised just how far towards the heel the sweet spot is on this one. Uh, if I put the ball there, you can see it's it's almost outside of the, the, the grooves on the face. So not quite a simple blade design. We can see here a little bit of a weight uh, distribution but as as with the uh, the irons at that time they're putting the, the the mass right behind the ball which is good if you actually hit the ball um, right in the sweet spot but 
If you don't, then it, it's not very helpful for the moment of inertia. So the club will still twist um, in the way that a, a standard blade would do. This is a another coated shaft. This one's a brown shaft. So let's uh, see if I can do any better with that one. I want to make a joist weather as well. I've used this in the past. I found it really difficult. But now I've got the sweet spot where it should be. <clears throat> I think I might get on a little bit better with it. Sleeve, I think. Okay, next one is uh, an aluminium headed putter. Uh, it's the only aluminium headed putter I've got, although these um, were in production for a long time, uh, starting in the early 1900s, I think. The Standard Mills Company produced a lot of aluminium putters and even aluminium uh, fairway woods. Uh, if we look on the bottom, it's uh, got the Castle equipment company mark there who were based in London and Les Gowers signature who was a pro. Uh, the head itself it's a very chunky head quite a short blade length as we can see if I put the ball there uh, and it is weighted we've got some lead added in the toe there some in the heel how far into the head that goes I don't know um, and it's also got quite a bit of loft on it if I put that there we can see and this one's about nine degrees of loft, so uh, quite a bit of loft for the time. And again, it's another coated shaft. Um, I haven't used this one on the course. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how it goes in the test coming up. This one is one of the um, true classic putters and uh, this is a cashing putter. It's not produced by uh, either Spalding or Wright and Ditson. This one is produced by uh, Robert Forgan in Scotland under licence from Spalding. Um, you can see various bits of that, that uh, licence there. But cashing putter, shaft goes all the way through. It's a steel shaft again. Uh, other than that, it's the standard um, Spalding design. Uh, nice uh, ferrule there. And this has got the uh, the light, sort of almost metallic green shaft. It was used in a lot of putters at this time, and also a few woods. And it's a narrow diameter as well, uh, which was a feature of putters around about this time. Nicely balanced putter, and the sweet spot, nice and easy to locate behind the ball. Let's try it out. Let's see why this has been such a, a long lived successful putter. Look at the start that it went in. Right, next up we've got a another mallet putter, unusual looking putter this one, it's a composite head made I think from vulcanite which was a, a rubber um, that was boiled in sulphur I think it was. Uh, unusual head in many respects, quite a pronounced heel on it which is unusual for mallets. Groove face, we've got a brass sole plate, there we go, so Forgan, Black Magic, centre weighted, made in Scotland, and we've got three screws there holding that into place. Sweet spot, fairly close to the, um, the, the the shaft, and the shaft itself is similar to the Spalding one. It's not quite green, it's more of a goldy colour, this one, and it's also a normal diameter. It's not as narrow as the one we just saw in the Spalding. Now let's see how this performs. Going 
close. Right, this one is a, a classic style design. It's a, it looks like the 8802. Uh, it's actually the 8813, which I think followed the 8802. I think this one dates to 1965. I've not seen one with three sight lines before. Whether these were cut by one of the previous owners or not, I don't know. This centre sight line, slightly off from where I found the sweet spot to be, but you wouldn't uh, really notice that if you were using the centre sight line while you were putting. Put the ball down behind it. You can see it's a, a nice size head. Flanged blade design. Fluted shaft, which are these um, crimpings in there. This was a, a feature that gained quite a bit of popularity in the 1960s. And on the sole, we've got Wilson Staff 8813. Let's see how that one does. Next one is another absolute classic design, the John Letters Golden Goose. I've spoken about these before. Um, I do like this particular one, which I think was produced in the 1970s. The Golden Goose has run for many years. I think the first one was produced about 1946, so it is the original of this style. A uh, little ferrule on there. As I've just mentioned on the Wilson, it's got a fluted shaft. Um, left or right handed and the sweet spot aligns exactly with the uh, the the line cut into the head putting the ball down behind it what more can you ask for really nice putter let's see if it'll live up to the uh, press that I've just given it Having talked about easy to use putters, um, we're now coming on to this one which is a, a bit of a mallet style. Um, I think most of the other putters we've seen a gradual um, improvement in uh, putter design in terms of um, forgiveness if you like. Uh, this one, I don't really know what they were trying to achieve here. It's a very small head, um, all of the weight pretty much will be behind the ball. If you're slightly off centre, the head's going to twist. Uh, I have used it on the course and I, I really struggled with it. And also it's got very little loft. I've, I've measured up the loft on all of the clubs. I'm not really expecting this one to be one of the better performing clubs. Lucky 13, Slazinger. A few bag marks where clubs have been thrown in not very carefully by previous owners. Let's see how it does. Right, next up, one of the iconic putters is a ping answer. This one is the 85068 85 number, which identifies it to roughly the 1970s, I would say. Uh, it's a slotted um, face there. Quite a bit more loft than I was expecting. It's got about six degrees of loft. And the main features are the um, perimeter weighting here, which uh, improves the moment of inertia, stops the club head twisting so much. It's got an offset head, which quite a lot of people like when they're putting. The fact that this is such a popular putter, just about every manufacturer has copied it over the years. It says a lot about the um, underlying brilliance of the design I suppose really. Uh, let's see if it uh, does the job. Very good. Oof. 
Right, next up we've got, um, I don't know what you'd call this, a sort of a concept putter. Um, it's a Dunlop Golden Wand. Uh, the sweet spot lines up very nicely with the sight lines. There are a couple of uh, brass strips missing from it. I'll, I'll need to find some way of, of replacing those with perhaps a bit of sheet brass at some stage if I, if I ever re, um, fully refurbish this one. On the sole, especially designed by Technosport, it's a brass sole plate on a... I'm not sure what the head's made of. It looks like a, a sort of a, a fibre, man-made fibre. Uh, it's not wood, that's for sure, though it looks like wood. Um, it's some form of... Uh, composite fibre material with a few bits of brass in there I presume for weight as on the sole and the top and bottom there. The shaft is aluminium, uh, whether that dates the club or not I'm not sure. Aluminium shafts went through a short pay phase of popularity in the 19, when would it be, 19, late 1960s, early 1970s and this is an al aluminium shafted putter. Now let's see how that one performs. And last up, we've got another um, unusual putter, shall we say. Uh, I think this was just trying to align the shaft with the sweet spot, which it does. Um, but it, it doesn't really um, achieve anything by doing that, in my opinion. It doesn't feel stable in my, in my hands when I use this one. Probably just a, a mental thing um, that I can't see the shaft connecting to the head. I'm sure that there's plenty of uh, rigidity in that. Uh, gooseneck there. Um, on the sole we can see the maker and the name Swilken Alter TB2 Axial Balance. It's a steel head with some small brass weights. Uh, yeah I think this was uh, <coughs> trying to produce something um, a bit radical for the sake of it really. It didn't really achieve anything in the in terms of improving the, the putting stroke or anything like that, at least not in my experience. But having said all that, let's see how it does in the putting test. That was just a push on me. Well, that was just an awful pulled put by me with the slope accentuating the miss. And there you have it. What have we learnt from this? Like most of these short club comparisons on YouTube, absolutely nothing. The conditions were far from ideal and the very limited number of strokes can't allow for the inconsistencies in my putting. There was definitely a right to left slope on the floor and the fact that I was putting on a laminated floor seemed to affect the roll of the ball more than I'd expected when putting on grass. Maybe the dimples had a greater influence on the harder surface. What we have seen though is the gradual development of putters from very simple blades through to blades trying to position mass behind the ball and then to flanged blades. Mallets have been around for a long time but in recent years they've become the dominant style with extreme OMI creating very stable putters. The answer putter was a major step and is still a popular style even today. In fact it's now taken on the name of a blade putter with most golfers, presumably due to the fact that actual blade putters are no longer seen. As for my favourite styles, I like blades with no offset, including flanged blades, and I like the golden goose style, more often referred to as a bullseye, and its derivatives and a simple mallet is nice to take out occasionally for a change. One thing I have learnt though is that I don't always properly align the sweet spot with the ball, even when there's a fluorescent orange post-it sticker on the club. Well, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time.